Two weeks left. Yeah, it goes by quickly. You're a very quiet group. I have no idea <laughs> how you're doing in this course. So I'm just going to have to assume you're okay. Because uh, I don't really hear from anybody. But what it comes down to is that if you do feel like you're lost, then, you know, back up. Come talk to me and we'll see what we can do. We're going to take the attitude of the company X, which has a philosophy. If you can't move forward, then retweet. Get it? <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to give you some homework. Uh, tips on the homework for PM4 and PM5, which you have left. And they're really not that bad. In fact, all the PMs I don't really think are that bad. But what they do require you to do is they test you to see, do you really understand what's going on? And do you understand the techniques of what to do? A lot of you just look at the book exercises, which quite frankly are, are very simplistic. And I'm asking you that when you're in a situation where things aren't clear, then you have to understand what CPI or critical path or whatever, what does it really mean? And if you understand those concepts, then you can solve any one of these problems. So you're given a table, a bunch of activities and everything else. And you've done this kind of problem before. Here's the one hint about this one. A lot of these paths overlap. And so if they overlap, they're using the same steps. So if I buy something to reduce the cost, I don't have to buy it. Say I have three paths that I have to reduce. Well, it doesn't mean I have to buy it three times. I only need to buy it once because all three paths use the same piece of equipment. So be aware of that. It also asks you to do a resource table. A resource table you could actually do it either way. You could get a resource table and do it backwards to get this. And from this, you can get, um, uh, da -da 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 -da. network diagram. Anyway, here's the example. A is four days and two resource hours. So they tell you it starts June 1st. They don't work weekends. So two, 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 two. Four days, two hours each. If I had to do this backwards, A goes four hours. Now, what follows A? We see the B does, we see the D does, we see the F does. Now, you could do it one activity letter at a time, or you could do it according to precedence. But what it comes down to is that B, it tells you, has a duration of six days, and six resource hours. So it's six, six, six. And then if I had done this all the way, then it would show Monday, six, Tuesday, six, Wednesday, six. So that's six days, six hours each. I cut it off here because, you know, I got to leave you some work to do. And D, it tells you four resource hours a day for 11 days. So four, four, four. And so that's three days, and that'd be the entire next week after that. That's eight days, and then three days beyond that. And F is eight resource hours a day, and the duration is four, four days. So it's eight, eight, eight. And then I would have another eight for the next Monday. And then I just total all these hours up. And that tells me how many resources I need every day. What it comes down to is, yeah, it's a long and a lot of detail. And that's what projects typically are. But what you need to do is just maintain your discipline. PM5. PM5 starts asking you to use a lot of coefficients and equations. And they're actually fairly simple, but you just have to remember which ones you use in which situations. So there's just a few basic concepts and one of the big concepts here is time and cost that's what everything revolves around and so the idea is is that we can take time and so it's speaking the same language as cost we turn it into dollars and so we have a plan value and a percent completed and what does that give me my earn value 
And so these are the real values. What did I actually use or do? So my earn value divided by my actual costs. We have variance, meaning how much does this deviate from my original plan? How much further <laughs> do I have to go? Or basically how much have I earned up to this point? And then we have indices, CPI and SPI. One is for cost, one is for time. And so what I'm concerned about is am I doing good or am I doing bad? And the most, this is pretty simplistic. If I'm below one, I'm doing bad. If I'm above one, I'm doing good. And so that tells me everything I need to know. Now for the first question, when we look at this one, what is it telling you? I'm just going to do activity B. You can do activity A. So activity B, my plan value is 80,000. And where do I get that? The problem tells me. My actual cost, though, and it tells me my actual cost is 100000 and it's 75% complete. So I'm trying to figure out what CPI is, and CPI is EV divided by AC. Basically, how much have I gotten done that I've earned up to this point divided by what my actual costs are? And so activity B, A, C is 100,000, so it turns out to be 0.6, which means I'm doing pretty bad, meaning I'm spending a lot more money than what I have planned to spend up at this point to get done what I need to get done. Now, the next question gives you basically a spending chart and how much was spent over this entire project. And so the first one asks you to graph this, and it's cumulative. There are pros and cons to using cumulative versus not cumulative. Cumulative gives you a view of how much of my total budget I'm chewing up. And month by month gives you a more granular look of how you're doing. So what's cumulative? Well, the cumulative for January is 8,400. Cumulative for February is 8,400 plus 13,650 which means it's 2250 and then March is the sum of all these and the sum of all these and so on and so forth. The next question asks you about stages. And so what this is going to look like is kind of like an S curve. And so say which months do you think, well, gee, this is really low. So this has got to be the initiation phase <laughs> and so on and so forth. The, last question, uh, the next question just asks you, uh, what does total budget mean? And so if these are my budgeted dollars, then what this is pretty much telling me is that this is what my PV is. And so the thing you need to think about is when I look at SPI and CPI, how many days am I over, how many days are I under, and what applies. If it's time, it's going to be SPI. If it's cost, it's CPI. Now, hint. When you have, when you have SPI and CPI, use the long equation for EAC. So EAC equals AC plus, and then I don't remember the rest of the equation, but you can look it up. And one equation I don't think they have out there is value of completion, and that's BAC minus EAC. So that tells me if I want to figure that out, I need to figure out what those two things are. I didn't write anything for question four, because question if, if you could do one, two, and three, you should be able to do four. It's just a word problem, but it's more of the same. If you have any questions, please let me know, and good luck with the homework.